on the face of August, the weather of unfair and to prepare, I did to repair the love I was inclined. I got up with the land in the English Folk Dance and Song Society got about half a million pounds to put lots of their major collections online on a big digital archive that's freely available for everybody. And as part of that, the Performing Rights Society gave them a grant to commission some new music, and that's where I got involved. They asked me if I would explore this wealth of material, about 58,000 songs, tunes and dances, folk plays, letters, correspondence, uh, diary entries, all sorts of bits and pieces. So I accepted this commission, very excited to go and dig about in this web portal with all these fabulous pieces of undiscovered music in there or earlier versions of pieces that have been published in books with all the scribbles on from the collectors that don't make it through the editing process. So there's lovely raw data there collected in the field. You can see the, the notation they've done as they're sitting there with the singers and little comments, little asides, all nonsense, things like that. The, the field notes and the really personalised, peopled items. So I went in and found loads of material and started wondering what sort of musical shape this would have and who I would be collaborating with. Sam Sweeney and Rob Harburn are two of my key people who I like to have with me all the time, so I knew they'd be there. And at one point I thought we'd just keep it a small piece, small commission, me doing that. And then I realised that this resource, because it's for everybody, it's so widely available, I wanted different perspectives on it, so I wanted to choose several singers, several strong singers with strong styles and see how they felt when they got in there as well because I'd gone in and found my little pool of treasure and I wanted to see what they got out of it too. So I wrote my wish list and slowly worked down it and uh, incredible, incredible response. So we've got Seth Lakeman who came on board. He great roots in traditional music and a real lover of this material and the whole scene and the world it comes from. Martin Simpson I do quite a lot of work with in Sheffield on various projects and he's just brilliant and brings the American influence and songwriting and the exploration and the, a very particular sound that he's got as well. Nancy Kerr as well has recently moved to Sheffield and I haven't done any work with her before so I really wanted to explore her style and approach to music which is quite different to mine but still very rooted in that English tradition. And then, of course, Ben Nichols, the bass player, double bass player, fabulous musician and singer. And the fact is the singer really contributes to this. I wanted everybody involved in the project to be a singer. And there's quite a lot of big group singing involved in this. So the process went that I went into the website and dug around and found lots of material that I thought would be appropriate for different people. I selected various pieces I thought singers would be suited for and sent them off and interestingly they all listened to those and followed those either those collectors or those genres or those styles but they didn't use the material I'd found they went into the collections and found their own and I think that's a real indication of how personal it is for singers they have to really connect to the material they're working with. So everyone in the group had two or three pieces that were theirs that they'd selected and worked up individually or in small groups. Seth and Ben worked on some stuff when they were touring with Seth's band. I worked on some stuff with Sam and Rob on the road. I met up with Martin and Nancy to develop some things. So most of the tracks had a basis when we came to the group, when we came together. And then right from the beginning, as soon as the instruments were out and we started playing, it just sounded amazing and it was such a relief for me because I'd been building this massive project and I didn't know what was going to happen, but it sounded great and everybody listened and laughed and played and, and everyone was very supportive of each other's ideas and very creative with coming up with new ideas and engaging with the sounds that we were making and exploring different instruments. And it was just, it was great, that first day was great. So rehearsals from then on were easy and relaxed and we pulled it all together for the launch in June and straight after that we went straight into the studio to record the album and that studio was phenomenal. We went to Real World down near Bath and it's Peter Gabriel's studio, a wonderful place. We all sort of arrived and just went wow. Um, it was incredible and because we were just all there together, there were seven of us and Andy Bell, the engineer, 
just there. We were there for a limited time, so we were cracking on. We were just getting, firing this stuff out that we'd just done and tightening it up and arranging it for the album as opposed to live gigs as we went. So it was a really busy and intense time. Uh, but listening back to it on those speakers in that massive studio was just, it, I'll never forget that experience. It was wonderful. found Arthur o. Bradley in a collection by Alfred Williams. It's also in Harry Albino's and Cecil Sharp's collections too. And it's a crazy song about a guy called Arthur o. Bradley who decides to get married and find himself a wife. Neither of them sound particularly attractive characters and the whole song just goes through their chaotic wedding and the food that they have and the party. They have a bit of a knees up, lots of booze it sounds, and lots of dancing. And my favourite line is, while some only one legs had gotten and that which they had, it was rotten. Like any song with that line in it's got to be in there. So a lot of these songs just come with the lyrics and there's no tune attached. So for that one we had to find a tune. Uh, it mentions a tune in it called Mad Mole in the lyrics. It talks about that and that tune is a Northumbrian pipe tune or more commonly known as the Peacock Follow the Hen. So we put that tune to it and Rob Harburn also came up with another tune to go for the chorus to break it up a bit. And then Nancy's Fall the Day is a really joyous celebration of traditional musics and she's written a song herself in response to this archive and this commission, this collection and the performance that we're doing. So it draws on the singers and the collectors and the, the ideals about the collectors. It really draws on the idea, the fears of the early collectors that this music was dying out and it celebrates the beauty of all the music that we're working with here. It really sums up the project. Seth brought Stand By Your Guns, which is a broadside song collected by Frank Kidson. Uh, really, well, they're quite short, some of the broadsides, and so Seth has added verses and added lyrical material and written tunes, because broadsides don't come with tunes, and of course he's put his stamp on it, and it's most clearly a Seth track. Will Warren sound their bell, be steady boys, be steady. From starting as a commission to do a small performance on the launch of this wonderful web portal, it's grown into a phenomenal project with the album and I'm really excited to be taking it on the road later this month too. So thanks to Arts Council England for support with that. Thanks very much to English Folk Dance and Song Society for putting the whole project together. It's been a wonderful experience and we're up and down the country over the next month. I really hope to see lots of people there. Will go.